Thank you, Mary. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, and as, as the first of today's speakers, I've tried to structure my talk to try and open up some uh, themes for the day as a whole. I'm going to be looking at Boydell's gallery in conjunction with his um, shop on Cheapside in order to examine some of the um, shifting subject positions which he established for the public in the second half of the 18th century. And as such, I, I'm drawing upon the uh, the notion of turning readers into spectators and vice versa that Louisa Calais um, explores in her book on the, um, on the Fusely Milton Gallery, um, but also suggesting some other possibilities um, and mediations for Boydell's public. Uh, let's see if this works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this is Boydell here in a portrait by his nephew, Josiah, which was engraved 25 years into his career as a print seller. And this was a career that spanned the, um, the entirety of the second half of the, um, the 18th century into the early 19th century, uh, during which he was both able to respond to and shape significant shifts in the art world and the art market in Britain and beyond. Um, Baudel was trained as an engraver, and indeed he, he began his career as such, but he quickly realised that his talents were not so much artistic but entrepreneurial, and by 1751, he'd set up sizeable premises on Cheapside in the City of London, um, from which he ran a business specialising in the sale of reproductive prints, initially primarily after Continental um, Old Masters. <coughs> um, the breakthrough work, of course, in, in terms of securing um, Boydell's reputation and also the financial success of his business was the publication in 1761, of an engraving by William Woollett after Richard Wilson's destruction of the children of Niobe. Um, Boudel paid £150 to Woollett to engrave this plate, which was an unprecedented sum, um, which posed also a significant financial risk for his firm, but it paid off and it netted him um, some £2,000. And really its success was proof that British engraving, um, which is to say... Um, engraving of British paintings in, in the high art vein by British engravers could be um, profitable. And what was additionally significant about this print was that its quality was immediately recognised um, on the continental market, and this allowed Boydell for the first time to offer English prints in exchange for French imports rather than having to buy French prints for hard cash. Um, this fundamentally altered the dynamics of the, um, the print market. So by the time this, por this portrait of Boydell was engraved, Britain was now exporting more prints to the continent than it was importing. And these prints were recognised not only for their, their technical quality, but also served to disseminate English painting, both nationally and internationally, not only in Europe, but as far afield as America and India. In the, um, in the following decades, Boydell would turn to buying and directly commissioning paintings from British artists. Um, his business increasingly revolved around the reproduction and display of contemporary works of British art. Um, and in the years following publication of, um, of the Wilson Woollett print, Boydell's print publishing business expanded rapidly. And so as a result, in 1767, he moved across the road to number 90 Cheapside, a premises which quickly became an attraction for both Londoners and visitors to the capital. And the area in which Boydell had set up shop, of course, was among, among the most prominent commercial thoroughfares in London in the second half of the 18th century, a space that was recognised not only for its concentration of commercial activity, but for the luxury and display which was visible from the street. So in a guidebook published in, um, in both English and French in 1780 by the print seller Samuel Fors, Cheapside was described as being remarkable for the richness and beauty of its shops and one of the most frequented streets of London. An earlier guidebook published shortly before Boydell's move to his new premises described the street as being adorned with lofty buildings inhabited by goldsmiths, linen drapers and haberdashers and unfortunately, there are no surviving views of either the interior or um, exterior of Boydell's shop, but I'm showing this, um, this 19th century view as it's the closest that I could get to 
illustrating uh, where the premises would have been just off the uh, sort of the right hand edge of this image on the corner of Ironmonger Lane. And it's easy to see why Boydell would have settled upon Cheapside for the location of his print shop, and in particular that he should have selected a premises on the corner of Ironmonger Lane, which is a situation which gave him the advantage of having two large street-facing windows, maximising his opportunity to display his prints to the, um, the passing crowds. And this um, watercolour by John Elwoods shows a, a sort of similarly orientated shop to Boydell's, although Boydell's was on the... Um, was to the right of Ironmonger Lane and the cheap side frontage would have been um, rather wider. Um, this image, of course, belongs to a genre of print shop window views that generally treated the, uh, the print shop spectators rather satirically. Um, but the German visitor, Sophie von La Roche, who, who entered Boydell's shop, was rather more generous to, uh, to those that she looked back at through the window once she was inside the building. Um, she noted that she stayed for some time so as to watch the expression of those outside. <clears throat> to a number of them, Voltaire's statement that they stare without seeing anything